Hello everyone, welcome back to our BGP hands-on series. In today's episode or demo or hands-on lab, we're going to learn or see one another important concept of BGP, this, which is called sometime non-transit autonomous system. If you recall our from the first uh, the topology that we were using, we had three routers configured. We had the router R2 in the middle and with the router R2 we had connection to two ISPs, ISP1 and ISP2. And ISP1 was advertising some network or some IP prefixes which were seen on ISP2 router also. That means those ISP1 prefixes were being advertised to R2 and then router R2 was further advertising those prefixes from ISP1 router towards the ISP2 router. That means the R2 router was acting as a transit AS. And sometimes you do not want this kind of configuration because now the R2 router could see potentially see all the network from both the ISPs. Or let's say we do not want the ISP1 routes need to be propagated towards ISP2 and vice versa. So in that case, we want the R2 to be advertising only its local prefixes to both the ISPs, but we do not want the R2 to become a transit AS. So in this episode of Demo Hands On, we're going to see that how do we go ahead and configure router R2 to be a non-transit autonomous system. So for this, we can go ahead and take a look at right now that what are the prefixes that the ISP2 router is receiving from router R2 and from ISP1 because router R2 is in the middle and it is connected with ISP1 and ISP2. So let's go ahead and jump directly onto the ISP2 and let's take a look at the BGP routing cable on ISP2 router. So on ISP2 router, we could see that we are getting quite a few prefixes from 22.2 which is a router R2. There are a couple prefixes on the top and we also have few prefixes at the bottom that we are receiving from 22.2 which is our router R2. But if you really take a look at from router R2, router R2 is advertising some of the things from autonomous system 100 which is nothing but your ISP1 router. You can take a look at the AS path attribute 100 in this case. So the routes that I've highlighted, like one, two, three, four, five, six, out of these top seven routes, the six prefixes are being advertised by the ISP1 router. And then we could see there are few more routes which are also being passed through the AS100 and the autonomous system one. That means there are quite a few prefixes that are being advertised by ISP1 towards R2 and then the R2 is acting as a transit AS at the moment and sending these prefixes or routes towards R2. And again, as I said, sometimes it is okay, uh, but we really do not want this. And we can go ahead and you know verify the same thing by using the advertise route command. So we can say show BGP neighbor. And the neighbor in this case is 172.16.22.22. And we can take a look at the routes that are being advertised. So you could see these are the total number of routes that are being advertised by R2 towards that neighbor. So in this case, if you see the most of these routes that are being, you know, advertised, there are these are the routes that are being advertised by your ISP1. You could see the top route. And then again, we have few bottom routes and we can take a look at even the next top prefix. So these are the routes or prefixes are being advertised by 12.11 which is your ISP1 router. Again you know the whole intention or the whole idea is that we do not want router R2 to become a transit AS and we just want R2 router to advertise it's only the locally originated network to both the ISP1 as well as towards the ISP2, not the route received from ISP1 to, to ISP2 and vice versa. So how do we do? go ahead and do that? For this particular exercise, we can go ahead and make use of the AS path access list. So how would you go ahead and configure that? So we have a command if you follow IP, after IP there is a command that is AS path. 
So the AS path command is really used for the BGP autonomous system path filter. Because if you take a look at here, we know that the routes that are coming from ISP1 has an AS path attribute of 100. And that's what we want. So what we really want that any time and again, you know, uh, from ISP1 towards if you want to filter would be 100 and anything which comes from ISP2 towards 1, it would be with the AS path 200. But if you take a look at it, there is one thing is common between both these ISP1 route as well as the ISP2 route that all these routes has the AS path attribute configured. If you take a look at this 100, these prefixes, that really says, okay, hey, these are the prefixes we are receiving from AS100. These are the prefixes that the router R2 is receiving from AS200. So the whole idea is that we do not want any of these prefixes of 100 going to 200 and 200 going to 100. The only prefix that we want from R2 towards ISP1 and 2 are the our local uh, like our locally originated networks. So the only locally originated network that we are interested in is this particular one. And how do we know this is locally generated? There are a couple ways. The easiest way, we do not have an AS path attribute. And the second thing, if you take a look at the next stop, is really 0 0.0.0.0. So that's the reason we are using this BGP attribute of AS path, the BGP autonomous system path filter. So we are interested in filtering the AS path. So that's the reason we're going to go ahead and say AS path. With the AS path, we'll go ahead and say access list. And we can go ahead and give a name of access list. And what do we want to do with this access list? Do we want to permit? Do we want to deny? So we'll say permit. And after that, we need to go ahead and configure a BGP a regular expression. So in the BGP regular expression, there are multiple characters that you can go ahead and make use. For this particular demonstration, we will be using two of the most commonly used characters. One is the caret symbol that indicates or the basically the beginning of a string. And then the another character that we plan to use the dollar symbol, which matches the end of a string. So in our case, our regular expression for this particular case is going to be caret and dollar symbol. So what this caret and dollar symbol together really means, they're going to match an empty AS path. And when you have an a empty AS path, it will match all prefixes from local AS. That means it is going to match all the AS path where we do not have an AS path. Let's put that way. That means it's going to take a look at it and say, hey, this is not a match. This is not a match. This is not a match. Because the whole idea is that we need to match an empty AS path. And the only entry that we have in with an empty AS path is the very first line. So it is going to match this particular line and it is going to permit this empty AS path entry. And now we can go ahead and apply this AS path access filter that we are configuring towards both of our neighbors, ISP1 and ISP2. So before I go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and quickly take a look at on ISP2. At the moment, we are not filtering anything. We are getting quite a few things from 100. And if I go ahead and run the command on ISP1, we would see the same thing. Now let's go back to R2 and let's complete this configuration. So we have configured our AS path filter. Now let's go ahead and apply that on the BGP. So the BGP process ID is BGP1. And now let's go ahead and specify your neighbor because this is applied at a per neighbor level. So 172.16.12.11. And followed by here we have few things. And one of the things that we are interested in applying is the filter list. Establish BGP filter. So we need to go ahead and apply the filter list. And our filter list that we had configured is one. And what direction we want to apply. So do we want to apply this incoming direction or outgoing direction? In this case, anytime when R2 is advertising, we want to go ahead and apply it in the outgoing direction. So we'll go ahead and say out. And let's repeat the same command for our second neighbor, 172, 16, 22.22. Filter list, one again, outgoing direction. Now at this stage, we went ahead and created an AS path filter. In that filter, the only thing we said, okay, match the empty AS path. So it is going to match all prefixes only from your local AS. And then we went ahead and applied this filter to both of our neighbors, 
our two neighbors with the R2 are your ISP1 and ISP2 and in the outgoing direction. And again, filter, okay, so it is not like something dynamic, so what we need to do? So now if you take a look at here, the filter got applied. And now if you take a look at on our ISP2 router, the only route the ISP2 router is really receiving is from your router R2. Now we are filtering the routes from your ISP1. We are not advertising any route that is coming from ISP1 to R2 towards ISP2 because now a router R2 is filtering all those routes for us. And we can go ahead and verify the same thing and take a look at it and see hey, what are the things that it is really advertising. So it's a show IP BGP neighbors and we can go ahead and give the IP address for our neighbor and we can take a look at okay what are the routes that are being advertised. So now the only route that are being advertised our local AS route and this all happened because of our AS path filter that we created with the help of IP AS path access list one permit carrot and dollar symbol that again matches an empty AS path. So it will match all prefix only from your local AS. That means anything which is coming from any of these remote AS will be dropped. And that's what we notice. Okay, this is the only network that now we are advertising. And we can go ahead and verify the same thing for the towards the ISP1 also. So now for that we can go ahead and twelve dot eleven. And now let's take it up. So even on the ISP1 side, this is the only network that is being advertised. So that's how we could go ahead and configure an autonomous system to be a non-transit autonomous system. Now the router R2 is not going to pass any traffic between ISP1 and ISP2. Again, if for some reason you want R2 to act as in a you know transit system, you can go ahead and remove this filter. But this concept is very powerful, guys. And you know, uh, you will get to do this a lot more in your like real scenarios where you are pairing with multiple ISPs. And for those ISPs, you do not want to become a transit system where you know one of the ISPs routes or the internet traffic you know is going via your organization. So in that case, you want to make sure that your organization is configured properly you know if there are certain thing it needs to allow you can go ahead and allow if there are certain thing you need to block you can go ahead and simply block that that'll be all for this episode or hands-on i will see you guys in next thank you